Hello, I'm Axel Wilkinson from HitFilm.com, and welcome to the first in our series of videos on using Mocha HitFilm. I'll be doing a number of Mocha tutorials, focusing on different aspects of the software, but in this first installment, before we actually get into tracking with Mocha, I'm going to focus on how Mocha's planar tracking works, and how this affects where we decide to place our tracking splines. So hopefully you'll stick with me and watch through this video, as I think it will give you a great foundation for working with Mocha in our future tutorials. Planar tracking in Mocha is rather different from other camera trackers you might be used to. There are a lot of excellent trackers out there that use various types of tracking, but since here we're focusing on Mocha, we want to make sure that we understand how Mocha's planar tracking works so we can get the best results possible. I have an animation here, which I built to demonstrate how Mocha HitFilm works behind the scenes. This image will serve as our plane, and this shape is the spline that we've drawn in Mocha. When we draw a spline in Mocha, we're basically telling Mocha, this area is all one flat plane, please track it through the footage. So Mocha takes that shape, it duplicates it, and then each time our plane moves in our footage, Mocha realigns the contents of the search area onto the new frame. Even when the orientation of the plane changes in 3D space, and skew or perspective shifts are introduced, Mocha's planar tracker can follow this movement easily since it's working with a large area of texture in the shot. Understanding this is critical to determining what areas we should choose to help Mocha get an effective track. Since Mocha is working with the texture contained in our spline to track the footage, using a larger area with more texture in it is going to help Mocha track that more effectively. For this reason, using small tracking markers while you're filming isn't always the best approach if you're using a planar tracker. Instead, the tracker wants bigger areas of texture, as it can follow those more effectively. I'm going to switch over to some footage and hit film now, and we can replicate this process manually to get a better sense of how it works. Okay, so here I've got this scene imported into hit film with a significant camera move. And there are two copies of this on the timeline here. The bottom copy will represent our footage. Then the top copy is basically that duplicate that Mocha makes to line up with the footage. And we'll use masks here to represent the splines that we would draw in Mocha. Okay, so to start with, let's draw a spline onto this wall. And if I turn off our bottom layer, you can see the top layer, all it contains is that area. So that's all that's being used to search. And now, if I switch to the Move tool, and I move that, you can see when that becomes out of alignment with the layer underneath, right? And so that's what Mocha is essentially doing. It's looking at the details in this search area we've defined, and then it's just going to adjust those until the details line up as closely as possible. So understanding this helps us to determine what type of detail should be included in the areas that we use to track. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see those details better. And now as I move this, notice it's not that difficult to tell when our copy is properly lined up with the original underneath. Even by eye we can tell when that happens, and Mocha is much better at this than our eyes are. But if we go back to this mask, and we were to increase the size of the mask a bit, there we go, now the top and the bottom edges of this plane are included in the mask. And if we switch back to our layer now, as we adjust that, it's really easy to see when that is out of alignment because we have those clear edges to work with when lining things up. Okay, so when you're selecting your areas, if the edges of the plane you're tracking are visible, then go ahead and include those edges inside your spline. That gives Mocha some great detail to use when lining things up. And that small bit of the area that's outside of your plane that's included in the spline, that's not a problem. Mocha can use that to calculate how the plane itself is moving. Let's delete that mask and we'll look at another example. Let's go up here in the sky. We have lots of area available, so let's select that. Now, in this case, as I move this around, can you tell me when I'm in proper alignment or not? Well, no, there's just no detail or texture there that we can use to get a good track. Here you can see the edge of this frame is visible, and so we know we're out of alignment from that. But just looking at the area inside our spline, it's impossible to tell if that's properly aligned with the footage, because there's just not enough detail there to work with. So even large areas like this, if they don't have any detail in them, are not good 
for Mocha to use for tracking. Now, as I mentioned, Mocha is better at following detail than our human eyes. So even some surfaces with very subtle texture can work fine for Mocha to track. But if we have the option, we want to give Mocha the best detail and the best contrast that we can to work with. Okay, let's look at this same piece of footage now in Mocha, and we'll examine it further, look at some other places, and see whether they'd be good to track or not within the Mocha interface. Okay, so here we are in Mocha, and the first thing to do with any scene when you import it into Mocha is to make sure you're familiar with the scene. So we'll just watch this through. This looks like it's going slower than it is because this shot is actually done in slow motion. But we want to just watch the footage, maybe watch it through a few times, to get a sense of how the camera is moving overall through the scene. And then we also want to watch and look for planes in the scene that we could use potentially for tracking. Now with this footage, it's kind of ideal because we're in an urban setting and pretty much the entire scene is made up of various flat planes. And so there's tons of options here for tracking. So let's look at a few of them. Starting at the beginning. So with this plane, it starts here. These bricks down here are part of the same planar surface. And as we scrub through the footage, you can see that all the way to here, this is the end of that same wall. So this is the same plane still visible in the shot. So that wall is present through most of the duration of this shot. So it's an excellent option to use for tracking. Now, obviously, there's different parts of the wall visible at the start and the end of the frame. Uh, this portion that's visible at the start is pretty much out of frame now, but we do have a lot more of that planar surface still present. And so we could use an animated spline in this case to continue tracking that area. I'm going to add a spline here for the purposes of this demonstration. I'm not really explaining how to do this, but don't worry, we will cover that in the next tutorial. Okay, so with this spline in place, I'm just going to track forward a bit. You can see that Mocha locks onto that pretty decently because as we saw, there's some decent detail there for it to work with. And notice that even as this starts going out of frame, Mocha is totally okay with that. It can use the detail that's still in the frame to keep track of that shot. But eventually this is all going to go out of frame. So what we can do is animate the position of this spline so it uses a different area of our plane to track its movement. Maybe I'll reshape it. And so now we've changed both the shape and the position of this spline. But because it's the same spline, Mocha assumes that it's on the same plane. Now, if we were to move this shape down here, or up here, where it's on a completely different plane, Mocha wouldn't be so happy. That would confuse it. But, as long as we're on the same plane, then Mocha can follow that no problem. So, as I scrub back through, you can see that that shape is just sliding down the wall. And the reason that this doesn't cause a problem is because this spline does not define the track, or how accurate the track is, all it does is tells Mocha where to look in this frame to match up the movement on the next frame. So right here, Mocha is going to copy this detail, and when it goes to the next frame, it's going to match that detail up here. From there, it's going to copy the detail from the new position of this spline and match that to the next frame. So this spline could literally be in a different position on the plane in every frame, and it's fine with Mocha. It will use this detail to track the movement to our next frame, and then once we get to our next frame, it will use the detail contained in this new position to track the frame following that. This makes animated splines very useful for tracking long planes, such as this one, where the same portion of the plane is not visible through the entire shot, and for dealing with situations where we have foreground occlusion. Here Simon is right in front of our plane, occluding it, but we could animate the splines to avoid him and still easily maintain a good track. Okay, let's hide that layer. We'll go back and look at some other examples. This building in the background here. Along this seam, we have a change in the planar surface. This is at a different angle than the face here. Similarly on this side, that falls off at a different angle. So depending on the camera move, those changes in the planar surface may or may not be a factor. Basically, if there's a parallax shift visible in the footage, then that could cause Mocha confusion. Another example of this can be seen in this door, where the lines are in fact texture in the door. If you ran your hand across it, you'd feel that very obviously. But because it's a good distance from the camera, and because of the camera's perspective, that doesn't 
create any parallax shift, and so that it could all be treated as one plane and easily tracked within Mocha. We have a different case down in these openings. Here we have these wire grills with these big boxes of machinery, whatever that is, behind them. Similarly here, we have kind of a wire cage with some metal beams there, and there's these boxes inside. Now these are poor areas to track because there is parallax shift there. The bars and the wire frame in both of these cases is closer to the camera than the objects behind these grills. And so we're going to see parallax shift as the camera moves. This bar is kind of right in front of the edge of this box behind it. But as we scoot down through the footage, now you can see the edge of the box is very visible. And we've had a significant shift in the position of this bar in front of the box. So if we were to select this whole area as a tracking area, we would probably not get good results because each time we create a layer, we're telling Mocha this is all one plane. And if the area in it isn't a plane, then we're lying to Mocha. And if we lie to Mocha, we can potentially cause confusion. The same situation with this cage over here. Right now, this bar or this beam is kind of overlapping onto these circular fans or whatever they are. But if we jump back to where this first becomes visible, that bar is way over here, well away from those fans. But this bar is overlapping onto the fans over here. So that kind of parallax is what you want to watch for and avoid, because this is not a planar surface. Moving on, right about here, this wall comes into view in the background, and it stays in view through the duration of the shot. Here, this is still the same wall. And so we have a nice big plane that we could use for some good tracking data there as well. We have a sign on this wall. Sometimes you may want to track a scene to replace a sign. And if you look at this one, you can see that we've got a fair bit of motion blur happening that's uh, blurring that sign out. Mocha can actually do an excellent job of tracking through motion blur or through defocus blur. But to do this, we want to give Mocha the best starting point that we can. So find a frame with as much detail as you can get to start that track, and then Mocha will be able to hang on to that through whatever blur gets thrown at it. If we wanted to track this wall to replace this sign, we're going to get the best possible results by placing our tracking area exactly where the effect or the element we're going to add in will end up. So even though this sign is on the same plane as this wall over here, if we want to replace the sign, then placing our spline directly over it is going to give us the most accurate results. So as a rule, try to place a spline in the exact location that you will eventually be adding your effects. Now in some cases, this might not be possible. For example, Suppose we wanted to put a ship flying up in the air here. Well, we already established we can't track this area. So what would we do there? Well, in that case, these two buildings in the background are basically the closest objects to where we would want to place that effect. So by tracking those areas, and then perhaps also tracking areas such as this in the foreground, we can use the relative positions of those areas once we have a camera solve to get our effect into the right location. So if you can't track exactly where the effect is going to be, Look for areas that are as close as possible that you can use for reference when you're later positioning the effect. Okay, let's jump back to the end again. I'm going to hide this layer. And then let's look at this door, which is covered in reflections. As a rule, you need to avoid reflections when you're tracking a scene. So what if we needed to track this door? Well, here we could use Mocha's Add Spline tool to exclude those reflected areas from the track. Mocha interprets each layer we create as a separate plane within the footage. But if we want to create more than one spline on the same plane, we can use the Add Spline tool. And now I'll draw a spline around our reflection, and when I turn the mat on for this layer, you can see here the grayed out area represents what Mocha will track. And so here I've excluded our reflection from the track. This makes it very easy to track a window frame or a door jam while completely avoiding any potential problems caused by the reflection in the glass itself. Now, relatedly, using the Add Spline tool, let's go back to the example of our sign. I'll move it back over the sign. Perhaps we want to replace this sign, but our spline is very small. And remember, we want to give Mocha as much detail as we can to work with. And so what we could do in this case is just add another spline to the layer down here. Now both of these splines exist on the same plane, and Mocha has a much larger area of reference to compare 
when determining how that plane is moving. Okay, so hopefully this overview has given you a clearer understanding of how MOCA's planar tracking works and of what kind of detail you want to look for when you're positioning your tracking splines. In my next tutorial, I'm going to import some footage into MOCA and actually track it and show you how you can then move that tracking data back into HitFilm through a camera solve. So thank you very much for sticking with me through this one. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and that way you'll make sure you don't miss that next tutorial or any of the rest of our series on using Mocha HitFilm.